and a wonderful leadership and mentoring position that you apply in, in what is a predominantly very male world. And just listening to Morley, and I don't know how many of you were in here to listen to her, but she is just a demonstration of so many things that women from cultures and from backgrounds from women in this country and around the world face. And I really want to extend my congratulations for the work that you are doing and for the stance you are taking and for that example. And whether it was, whether it was Cassandra or Melanie, and I don't know your first name. Woodard. Woodard. They all had so many good things to say in terms of the roles that you are playing. So I did enjoy that. But to you, Mimi, can I thank you especially for putting this um, summit together. I think it's tremendous. And looking at this booklet, you know, look at the, the people that you have been able to gather with so much experience and expertise, really to gather and come and speak to, to this, uh, to this um, conference and the summit and the ideas you get. Because it is listening to you, it's, it's about being here and having a voice, being heard and being, being able to have that voice for all those issues that you raise. And as politicians, it doesn't matter who, which, which party you belong to, it's about listening and hearing from our community and understanding what those concerns are. And there are concerns, there are concerns in the African community that you have raised with me, um, whether it is in the area of women's affairs, and I'll come to that in a minute, but I also have the uh, portfolio areas of the prevention of family violence and also families and children, and that takes in early education, child protection and youth justice. And of course, there are many issues in terms of the issue around crime, law and order in our state at the moment, which you are all aware of, in fact, the entire state is. And I think as communities, we need to come together. And I had the great fortune and privilege to be with Mimi to speak to many African women out in Caroline Springs some time ago now, but it was tremendous because it actually highlighted to me, I don't know how many women from how many different countries were there, Mimi? Six or seven, whether it was from Nigeria or Tanzania or Cameroon or um, wherever Zimbabwe, South Africa, it was a, just a wonderful experience for me to be able to sit and speak with so many women, or those women, who had issues that they wanted me to understand. And I was very grateful for that because we were talking about uh, the issues in the African community, the issues that are not actually specific to your, the African community, they're actually, they're actually issues to, this, to the entire state. And that was around family violence and looking at the issue. And of course, we've had, the government has um, conducted or they had a mandate to have a Royal Commission, which the Royal Commission uh, concluded and handed down its report last March. And the government is, is um, underway in um, implementing those recommendations. Now, those, the reference that the Commission was given was fairly broad in terms of looking at the systemic issues and our services that are provided and what needs to be done and the many issues that we know about linking up and being you know fairly fractured and how there was some real concerns with in the court system especially and how we can do better and many of you will be aware of that. I think what is so encouraging is governments at all levels are looking at this issue, family violence, whether it's a local government, where there is some tremendous local service um, provisions that are being undertaken and also what is happening at uh, at the federal level as well as what's happening here at the state level. And I was very pleased that uh, Minister Cash, who has responsibility for women at a federal level, has taken this issue and it's been addressed to COAG, that's the Council of Australian Government. So all states and territories have, have a need and a want to try and bring these terrible statistics down, especially against the violence against women and children that are, that are occurring right across our communities. And many of you will be aware of the enormous contribution of Rosie Batty, who has really highlighted this issue to the Australian community, um, the very tragic circumstances of the death of her son, Luke. And I think no government could uh, have done what Rosie has been able to achieve in terms of really highlighting the human impact and the toll and just demonstrating what an enormous issue this is. <coughs> And uh, she certainly has taken that at a national level and I think needs to be 
congratulated for that stance. And from there, we have got this commitment from all governments of all persuasions at all levels to try and address this. And it was at that meeting with Mimi and with those wonderful women that I met, and they were some women who had come from professional groups, and it really goes into my other portfolio areas as well, talking about leadership, um, about their responsibilities and uh, their qualifications that they had, whether they're professionals in their own right and have come to Australia, to Victoria, to make this their new home and contribute here. And I think we've got such a proud history, you know the history of um, your communities, of what you provide, but what Victoria also provides. I mean, we really are built on multiculturalism. It's something that we're incredibly proud of with just so many different communities coming to Victoria over so many years and have achieved so much. And I think we need to be all very conscious of that, working together on that, because it is that inclusiveness, it is that diversity that gives us so much our wonderful experiences and all of your experiences that you bring make our state and our country better. And we need to embrace that, we need to understand it and also look at those look at those expectations and responsibilities that apply here in Victoria and in Australia. So I just wanted to really just have this opportunity that uh, to be able to speak to you to, to congratulate all of you that are putting back into your communities, but also what you are providing in this summit. And hearing about the concerns, as I said, politicians, we, we need to learn, we need to hear and we need to, to listen from you. I'm actually a former nurse and a former midwife and I spent 10 years at the Women's Hospital. So I met many women from who are of African descent uh, during my time there. I learned a lot from them as a midwife in understanding some of the cultural issues uh, that were that played out in the various African cultures. It was it was a tremendous understanding for me to, to be able to to have that appreciation. And I um, regard those years at the women's where I learned so much and I really think that I apply that in my everyday learning as an MP. And what I loved about all these words were really what I what I sort of share too. I, when we're in the in the chamber, in the in the in the parliament, debating or having question time, I don't look across the chamber and see a male or a female. I see somebody who I'm debating on a policy idea, or I have a difference of opinion about. It's not about whether they're male or female. It's about their policy area or policy idea that I am debating and trying to put my point of view across. And that's what I would like to impart to so many people in business and women in business and applying that. And coming from a meeting earlier today, I happened to turn on the radio and Elizabeth Prowse, the chair of the Australian Institute of Company Directors, was speaking. And she was speaking about the need for more women to be on boards and the cultural diversity that needs to be on boards. We know that there is not enough women on boards in businesses in leaders in companies, in politics, my side of politics are not very good at it, um, but we are doing more to look at that, and we understand we need to do more of it. We want to give women the opportunity to be able to juggle what their responsibilities are at home, and they want the, the choice they want to make. And so we are working to do that. But Elizabeth Proust also said, I think it was 2.5% of those women on company boards here in Australia, of the 30% who are of the makeup, there are only 2.5% that come from um, non Anglo Celtic backgrounds. And I think that was a very stark reminder as I was coming to this forum to just realise how we all need to do more to bring that diversity and to bring the inclusiveness and what you all have to bring as well as other migrant communities can come to to our great state and our great nation. So I just wanted to probably, I know that, that time has probably gone on too long anyway, but I just wanted to again um, acknowledge Mimi and all of the speakers and all of the participants here today, uh, just for your abilities and what you are doing in your own communities about taking those leadership roles, being the mentors, being the future, 
um, in so many areas. And again, if I can just quote more of these words, because I love them. And I think that is just a great way for all young women to aspire to. Continue to strengthen the girl child to be all she dreams of. Uh, well done to you all and keep dreaming. Thank you. Judgy, thank you so much. I just want to give you a message for the women when you joined, when you came and you stayed in Caroline Springs. The response was, it is really good to see a politician come when it is not about campaign. Somebody who wants to just know us and just understand us. I think we almost organised. I know it's very hard. It's the end of the day, but I... I am pretty sure you're going to enjoy talking to the mentors that we have today. So what we're doing is we're asking a few of the speakers that have spoken today and some that will be speaking tomorrow to actually have a chat with you one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a very informal mentoring session, but I feel like I'm making it formal by telling you what to do. I guess there are some guidelines that we need to follow to make it useful. So we're going to allow at least five minutes for you to talk to the person that's your mentor. At the moment, we have mentors sitting on this side. They're not going to move from their chairs. And they shouldn't be speaking with a mouthful. I can see some people still eating. So maybe it's not going to be very easy for you to mentor and have a conversation with you eating. So try and squish it in now. On the other side, which is opposite the mentor, will be the mentees. On your chair, you actually have a little bit of a leaflet. And it's just to give you some ideas of what mentoring is, and what is the role of a mentor, and what a mentee, that's what we're going to call you today, because it is part of what your role is, what you should be doing. So very quickly, I'm gonna go through that. I think the key essentials is, have a conversation, Ask some specific questions because you've been listening to a few of the speakers today. Ask them some questions that are going to help you with your own professional or personal development <coughs> or growth. Okay? To maximise that five minutes that you have. And what's going to happen is after five minutes I'm going to be the timekeeper, so I'm going to ask you to move on. So we'll be moving in this direction. Okay? So the person at the end will have to come down this way. Playing a bit of musical chairs here just to keep you busy. So have we got the basic guidelines? Any questions? Now do we have a mentor on each of the mentor's chairs? If we don't, we need a few more. No? All the chairs are filled here? You've got someone sitting opposite you? There's no one here. So I'm going to ask, Wadad, please, would you mind? You have been a speaker today, and I know you've lost your phone. We're going to make an announcement about it. She's stressing because she can't find her phone. We're going to make sure we find her phone in a moment. Um, who else can we ask? Mimi, do you have anyone who would like to ask to volunteer? You know a lot of people here. We need a couple more mentors. Saying, do as I do as I say, not as I Cheryl do. Cheryl Lee, your mentor. Could I get you to come in the room, please? I need more mentors. You and Amanda or Mahek should be able to help with mentoring. Sorry. You're leading by example. Thank you. We've got chairs down that side here. Yeah, thank you. So try and make it fun. It sounds really serious. Everybody's listening to me now, and I don't like that.
what we do to change the world. We have to start somewhere. We start with ourselves as individuals and that's how we grow and that's how we can improve and make a difference to ourselves but also to the world that we live in. No opportunities for bystanders to take a back seat and say, I wish this would change. You are the change you need to see, you want to see. Do something about it. So thank you for your cooperation and also for putting up with me, trying to round you up and telling you <laughs> off and ringing a bell that I'm sure you haven't heard for a long time. It's almost like you are on the TV show. So I'm going to wrap up because we do need to leave the venue so they can clean up so we can come back tomorrow. And Sherry Rose has got an important message for you. But from where I stand, I want you to give yourselves a big clap. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Just before everyone gets off and starts moving around again, um, please, we're having our.